Metacosis perfectionis once again, let's talk about the pre-capillary sphincter. Just when you thought that you knew all of your sphincters, you don't. This topic was discussed before in my biology playlist, so today we'll just focus on the sphincter. As a quick review, here is oxygenated blood leaving the left side of the heart going to your body. The cells will take oxygen and the cells will release carbon dioxide here. Oxygen and nutrients, carbon dioxide and waste. This is what? The capillary, which is a connection between the arterial side and the venous side. Veins will take you back to the right side of the heart. Arteries start here at the aorta, here yeah, branches from the ascending aorta, the aortic arch and the descending aorta. When it descends, it's first called descending thoracic aorta, and then you have abdominal aorta, and then you have blood supply all over the body. This is the arterial story. As for veins, they collect blood from blood capillaries and from lymphatic vessels. Very important. Eventually, your veins end up in the right atrium, which is part of the right heart. The difference between adult versus embryo, the difference between oxygenated, deoxygenated artery, vein, who's carrying the oxygenated, who's carrying the deoxygenated, what are the exceptions? All of this was discussed before. You can review it here. Your cardiovascular system is made of heart and vessels. The heart has valves, veins have valves. Now to the precapillary sphincter, which acts like a valve. Here's the story. First, don't forget why we're doing this. We're doing this because down here, there are cells waiting. Waiting for what? Waiting to receive oxygen. From whom? From the arterial side of the capillary. Oh, I get it. So now oxygen nutrients going to the cell. And the cells will then dish out carbon dioxide and waste onto the venous side of the capillary. The capillaries will take them to venules and then veins and then back to the heart. Easy? Easy. Now, what if I don't want this to happen? Why? Because I'm busy. Why? Because this cell exists in my fingertip and I'm running from a tiger right now. I don't care about my fingertip. I'm trying to give more blood to the heart, to the brain, etc. Oh, therefore, you can shut it down. Shut what down? The entire enterprise. And then what? The blood that was going to reach the capillary is not going to reach the capillary and it's going to get through to the other side in no time. Very quickly. We're not waiting for the cell. We're not waiting for diffusion of getting it. This takes time. We're shunting it very quickly. Okay. How do you shunt it? Okay. Ready? There is the meta arterial. The meta arterial could be considered as this piece right here or this piece right here. No one cares. And then there is the lovely channel. The lovely channel has two names. In the beginning, it's called the central channel. Near the end, it's called the thoroughfare channel. Okay, it's the same continuous thing. Some scientists will discuss this as a separate part from this, but since they are connected, who cares if you call it central channel or thoroughfare channel? It's like riding in a boat under the bridge. And then you're here in the venule side. For this shunting action to happen, you have to close this. And what's the name of this? That's your precapillary sphincter. Part of your meta arterial, like any sphincter, it's a set of smooth muscles. Every vessel has a lumen, which is the cavity, which should be filled with fluid, like blood. And we have the wall of the vessel. Okay, the wall is made of three layers. Tunica intima, tunica media, tunica adventitia. Don't forget that you have what? We have smooth muscles here. Now, if these smooth muscles grow to suit their function, they can become a precapillary sphincter. If you're talking about the meta arterial. Oh, that makes sense. Form follows function. Here is a lovely comparison between arteries, veins, and capillaries. Here are the types of arteries the types of veins, and the type of capillaries. Fluids and hemodynamics is not just about passing it, bypassing it, it's not that insignificant. For example, if you vasodilate, you know what this does to the resistance inside the vessel? It's gonna decrease, which decreases the afterload, which decreases diastolic pressure, which can lower blood pressure. The opposite can raise blood pressure, assuming, of course, that we're talking about arterioles. If you want a beautiful explanation of kidney physiology, I have a renal physiology course on my website, medicosisperfectionetis.com. Comes with 10 videos, 10 cases, notes, and my Perfectionetis Ultimate Notebook. You can download them today. No subscription needed. You buy it once, you keep it for you forever. And here is a 60% discount code, New Year Learning. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.